How would you like to grow your business the easy way, and in my humble opinion, the fun way, through speaking? Yes, you can literally speak your way to more business, and we can show you how. You know, when I started my coaching business 15 years ago, I struggled making only $900 in the first two years. Yeah, you heard that right. Less than $1,000 in two years. The problem? I was busy running around to networking events and handing out business cards, trying to help everyone, you know, everyone. Then I took the stage for the first time in my life and began speaking and teaching about the strategies I coached on. And when I really got my message dialed in, my business went literally from three figures a year (laughs) to seven figures. The secret I finally realized is that when you take the stage, you instantly become seen as the leading voice in your niche or industry. Today, we show entrepreneurs just like you and just like I was how to dominate your niche by becoming the leading voice, not just another expert. We run an incredible business mastermind speaker training program. It's called The Leading Voice. You guessed it. If you head over to leadingvoiceplatform.com slash podcast and grab my free roadmap, Eight Pillars to Profitable Speaking. This free roadmap outlines the exact eight secret weapons you need to truly become the leading voice in your niche. This is exclusively for my podcast listeners. You go to leadingvoiceplatform.com slash podcast and start speaking your way to more business. Speaking of getting booked, this podcast is about one thing, getting booked to speak more. Whether you are an established speaker or a newbie, we want to see your career take off. Hundreds of speakers are hired every single day. And you are next. Let's jump in with your host, Matt Browning. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome back to Speaking of Getting Booked. It's Matt Browning. And man, season two is off with a bang. Um, you know, it's a fun time for this. I'm glad we launched it when we did, you know, coming out of these pandemic times and all that stuff because we have so many more opportunities than ever before as a speaker. You you know, you have obviously local is coming back and, and with a vengeance. We have local gigs. We have national gigs. There's virtual gigs, hybrid gigs. So, you know, a lot of speakers are worried that, you know, the business is changing. I don't think it's changing. I think you have more opportunity than ever. And part of that gig is to be able to build up your, your, your CV, your resume, your bio as a speaker so that you can get noticed and cut through the noise. And my guest this week is going to help us do just that. It's Jill Lublin. She's a dear friend um, in the entrepreneur and speaker world. I've known Jill for many years. Um, she's an international speaker herself, of course, and she speaks on these topics and maybe you'll relate to this. Radical influence, publicity is one of her big wheelhouses, networking, kindness, which is all actually about her new book, um, and we'll talk about that, and all about getting referrals. She's the author of four best-selling books, including Get Notice, Get Referrals, that was published through McGraw-Hill, and she's the co-author of Guerrilla Publicity uh, with Jay Comrade Levinson, which is, of course, the Guerrilla Marketing uh, I was gonna say, uh, Godfather, that's what I was looking for, and Networking Magic. Her latest book, Profit of Kindness, went to number one of four categories. So Jill is a master at positioning your business for more profitability and visibility, and that's exactly what we need to do as speakers. Um, and she, you know, Jill's worked and consulted over 25 years in this business, probably longer by now. I bet she's going to update that bio um, with well over 100,000 people and working with national international media. So let's jump in. Jill Lublin, are you here, my friend? I am so excited to be here with you. I am too. I am too. You know, one of our problems is we start running out of time because before we go to tape, we're already like just talking about everything (laughs) that we want to talk about. And I'm like, wait, hit record. This is already a podcast. Always, Matt, with you and I, we always we always get down and start talking and and sharing lots of great things. Yeah, you know, so I want to jump in. And if you haven't heard uh, Jill's interview on our other uh, show, The Driven Entrepreneur, head over wherever you get podcasts and you can get on demand, The Driven Entrepreneur, to search for Jill Lublin. Um, pretty recently we had an interview on there and, and on that uh, show, you know, I want to cover a couple of things real quick, Joe, before we get going is one of the things I love about you and why we've been, you know, you know, friends and working together and always being able to support each other for years now is that just like your latest book, Profit of Kindness, you do lead with kindness. Um, I thought originally when I met you, that was like a CEO space. I know you've been a part of that because CEO space is a lot of, Hey, let's help each other. But I've quickly learned that that is not 
a CEO space thing. That's a Jill Lublin thing because you always jump in. My, your first question is, what are you working on? How can I help? Oh, that's exciting. Have you met this person? Can you talk to me a little bit about the kindness and the going first attitude of how you network and joint venture and so forth? Thank you. Well, you know, a piece of that really is coming from a place called how can I serve and support? And um, for me, that's that really is my uh, my mindset, <laughs> my uh, come from space. And I, you know, I know not everybody's like that, and that's okay. Um, you know, I also uh, I think it's important to meet people where they're at. But uh, I think certainly in the world of JV and success with speaking and creating relationships in life, it, you know, it's relationship capital. It's it's creating that visibility factor because of who you are as a person, right? And I, I think that's important in life. And we all come at it in different ways. And, you know, I say, again, that's fine. You be who you are. But I would encourage all of you to really know that relationship capital is going to pay off big in your business. Yeah, this, it's one of those things that um, if you're used to a tit for tat kind of attitude, you know, you, I'll scratch your back, you scratch mine. That's not what we're talking about. And that really doesn't work. So I scratch your back, you scratch mine is my instant gratification. It's like, hey, I got an itch. So let me do something for you because I need you to do something for me. What we're talking about is really genuinely, again, as your book says, the profit of kindness, which is just be kind, go out in the world and do something good. If you run into a neighbor help them out. You know, um, you know, a friend of mine said he was moving and the first, I, I started training myself to do this, Jill. Um, at first I was a little scared of it, but whenever I caught from church or, you know, family or whatever, somebody said they're moving, I go, Oh, do you need any help? And I really mean it. And you know, the other day a friend said, oh, I mean, yeah, like, if are, are you around? I'm like, yeah, I'll make myself around. And I showed up for four hours and helped him move on Saturday. And why? Not because I want something from him, but I want to be the kind of person, the kind of business person that takes the time for friends, family, coworkers, uh, et cetera, and just gives. And what happens is it comes back in some other way very often. Um, it's not mystical, magical. It's just kind of the way it is, right? If I'm open and giving, tend to be, I'm going to be around people that are open and giving, and I'm going to end up receiving probably 10, 30, 100 fold. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. And I love the fact that you did that. And yes, I mean, you're a busy person. You know, it's one of these things. Now, don't uh, everyone start emailing me saying you're moving next weekend. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I try to be available to help, you know. But, you know, it's it's that adage, if you want if you want something done, ask a busy person, right? It's, I, you know, I hate to tell you, Matt, I love when people say, oh, I'm so busy. Well, what are you busy doing, <laughs> right? Great question. I, are you busy making a difference? Are you busy um, doing things that are creating revenue? Are you busy making a difference in life? What are you really busy doing? And I, I'm going to encourage people to ask themselves that question. Yeah, what what are you... You know, it's funny. I, I just um, spoke and gave a message called, what are you working on? And this concept of, you know, people, oh, what are you working on? What are you working on? But the question is, yeah, but really, like dive in. What are you working on? What is it today that you're doing that is making a difference momentum. Let's kind of let's pivot into the the speaking world. When we first met, I don't remember who spoke first or where it went or whatever. It was a long time ago, but I remember um, I think we connected through our, our mutual good friend Mel Cutler. So shout out to Mel and Kate. They're doing they're on a great uh, adventure with a how do I even say it? they 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 made a, a sprinter van and they're traveling all around and they're just having a great adventure. So go find Mel Cutler on YouTube and and follow the <laughs> the journey. But Mel introduced us. In, this, in the seminar world, and I think we had you come and speak at one of our events, and all about publicity, of course, and it was kind of on the heels of the book you co-wrote with Jay Conrad Levinson, which was uh, Guerrilla Publicity, amazing, amazing book, and and then you were running um, crash courses, and you were running publicity PR workshops, and at some point, I came and spoke at one of yours. When you, let's just talk about when you first get introduced to someone, you're big on referrals. So what is something we can do if, if we have a friend or a coworker that says, oh, I know someone running an event, maybe I can connect you guys or maybe you could speak there, but you don't know who the person is. What's a good um, attitude or practice or communication style? What should we do if we're the speaker and we get introduced to it by a common friend to someone who might be able to you know, put us on a stage of some kind? How do, how do we act and what are some tips on that? So first of all, it's, of course, it's a big thank you to the person who's introducing you. I mean, hello, that's important. I, I also believe, you know, listen, people are busy these days. I think 
it's important to um, be focused in the conversation. Introduce yourself with who you are and how you can contribute. Um, you know, lead with your best skills. Uh, I think that's a key. Lead with the the most important, shall we say, celebrity piece about you. Um, you know, if you've shared some big stages or uh, you you know you you have some big PR. I mean, lead with that, and that's powerful. Uh, so I would tell you that if you can, and and honestly, I think right to the point. Hey, you know, Matt introduced us, and I'm so excited about your stage and. You know, here's what I speak about in general. Here's what I've done, written four books. You know, I think that I can contribute most to your people speaking about and then give them the, the give them the what is. And I, and I think that's great. I mean, explain that just real quick a little more. You said give them the what is. In other words, um, what what is it that you speak about? Like I would say, listen, I start with that. Yes, yes. I mean, start with hello, start with how are you, you know, a little bit of hello and, and how are you. But I really think um, these days, okay, this is this is in these moments uh, that people are busy and honor that and be focused with your conversation. That's where what people respect. And also they respect your professionalism. So definitely be professional, you know, engage and be professional simultaneously. I really I appreciate that. And actually, if you can, I want to dive into this a little bit into the weeds just for a second. So because I get this a lot where and it's wonderful, right? Someone sends a Facebook message or a mutual email CC and they're like, Matt, you got to meet so and so. And if they do it well, they say so and so is amazing. And then so and so meet Matt. He's amazing. He does this and that. They kind of say go at it. And then what always is frustrating is when the other person says, hey, Matt, great to meet you. You know, love to chat sometime and you know, let's find a time. And all of a sudden my brain goes, oh gosh, this is going to be five emails back and forth just to pick a time to talk, let alone, are we going to do anything together? Um, so what you said is your first reply might be, oh my gosh, thank you for introducing us. Hi, so-and-so I'm Jill. Here's what I speak about and what I, who I help and what I do. Here's some accolades, right? Again, so a little bit of prestige. So you know that I'm legitimate and you know that I'm credible. Um, and then do you kind of finish off with like an ask in a way, or do you like, you know, let me know about your upcoming event and if you'd like to talk about it kind of, how do you, for lack of a better term, use a call to action at the end of a first introduction email? Cause you're so good at these things. And I find myself wandering off sometimes and having open loops and I don't want that. Well, thank you. And why I'm good at this is honestly, I'm a, I'm bottom line about it. Number one, it's it's the nature, a bit of my personality, and I think that most people respect that. It's like they're busy, right? They're planning their events, their summits, um, the things they're spe- that I want to speak on. So my question to them is, you know, if you think this is a great fit, I would love to speak with you. Here's my calendar. Jump on that. If you'd like me to handle it another way, please tell me here. In other words, I give them the option of book on my calendar, tell me how you want to handle it. And by the way, some people just book it and then we're done, right? You and I tend to be like that. Let's just book it and be done. And and I think that's a beautiful thing. So part of it is a little bit of um, sometimes intuition with the style of the other person. But when you're on the first round, you know, my sort of bottom line approach is here's who I am. Here's what I speak about. I'd love to contribute to your people. Um, and, you know, let's book a time if that works best for you. If you want me uh, to just, you know, book it in another way, let me know. And I just keep it real easy. I make it. I like it. And, and this is the thing I think that's the bottom line of this conversation is make it easy for people, right? Make it easy for people. In other words, you know, and I notice some people want to talk on Messenger. Some people want to talk by text. Some people sure. want to be emailed, you know, try to see what's best for them. Got to start tiktok people, you know, it's just everyone <laughs> has a different platform. Um, one of the lines I like to use when I finish that, because I realize sometimes, and this might sound weird, but it just is what it is. Sometimes they're a, quote, bigger deal than you, and sometimes they're a, quote, not as big of a deal than you, if that makes sense, right? They have a smaller platform or a bigger one or whatever. So I, I sometimes if I say, here's my calendar, book a link, you know, and I'm not going to do that with everybody. So the line I started using at the end was, you know, um, let me know when you have some availability and love to chat. Or if it's easier, here's a link to my calendar for any times. And I use that line, or if it's easier for you. So I'm kind of like, hey, 
you can shoot me your times. I don't know how everyone works. I fully calendar my life. Um, but I say, if it's easier, here's a link to mine. Nine times out of 10, they just click it and book a link uh, and book a time. And then we, of course, talk and move forward. Hey, Jill, when you're doing live events, and let's just kind of go right to there. Do you look like uh, intentionally for speakers for your live event? Or are you kind of always looking to get yourself booked places and then you have your own live events as a, we'll talk about stage trade um, or whatever you want to call that. Are you always thinking, hey, if I have a live event, say for a day, two days, three days, um, I have X amount of speaker spots. And then do you go on the hunt for speakers? Do you text people that you know? How do you come about the speakers for your events? And, And this is over the years as well, Jill. So feel free to go anytime now into the past. I don't want this only to be like the post-pandemic conversation, if that makes sense. Sure. Well, a couple things. One is, um, you know, it's an interesting conversation about uh, about how long, you know, my events, public, my publicity crash courses, they're one day. And some people have three-day events. So because I'm a one-day event, it's a, it is another um it, it has to be really short, sweet, simple. And by the way, my publicity course is now virtual. Same thing, one day live, right? So I, it's actually the same conversation for me. Um, and what I look for is are people who can segment quickly. You know, I, I'm noticing um, and call it my media training, but I'm to the point right now where um First of all, not only am I training people to get to the point, be focused and be clear in their communication, but guess what? My speakers also have to deliver quick, focused content that really delivers great value and benefit, right? And so through the years, it's a couple things. One is, yes, there's some trades in exchange stage, also known as stage swaps. Um, and that's a great place to be, right? In other words, I'll trade your mine and, and I'll speak on yours. And yes, that does happen. Um, and I think also it just depends what the need is, right? So occasionally, let's say I came across someone who had people look great on video. Well, maybe they don't have a stage, but that's something my people need. So I'm looking also for things my people need. Um, and then, of course, the world of media, that can be everything from the video to uh, how to you know get great sound bites to different producers and and actual media telling them what to do. So I have to tell you, it's a it's a bit of a combination for me. I'm not the standard you know promoter who's got a three day event uh, looking to fill stages. So I think sure. that's a different piece. Mine is very focused in the world of publicity. So I, I want to make sure my people have what they need. I love that. So what I'm getting from this is you're looking for two big things or maybe the top of your list is one succinct conversation and teaching. And the second one would be the opportunity to be able to trade and kind of cross promote. So guys, what what you're hearing is just because you want to get booked on stage and you're a speaker, don't be one of these people that's like, that's what I do. I just speak on stages. I'm trying to get on more stages. One of the best things you can do to get booked on more stages as Jill saying, I've said over the years is to have some version of your own stage. Now, Joe, what do you think about, let's just kind of talk about this and unpack it a little bit, um, the different stage context, right? So there's maybe one person has a monthly meetup or networking group, and then you do these one-day crash courses. And then someone else has a three-day seminar, and then another person has a big podcast, and someone else is doing a virtual summit, you know, where you have all these different people. They're all, to me, they're different types of stages, how do you, if you even do this in your mind, kind of compare the apples to oranges, so to speak? Hey, I got a 200 person live seminar for three days. Or let's just say you have, I don't know, a 50 person, I'm making up a number, one day event, and then someone else has a podcast. Do you think all these are like the same but different and maybe it might be worth it? Or are you like, well, live stage for live stage, podcast for podcast? What is your take on that, if anything, honestly? Well, you know, I, I don't um, I don't always measure that exactly. So here's the thing. Yeah, podcast for podcast, I think that's great. That feels fair. That's good. Um, here's my general take. <laughs> Listen, I'm a publicity person. I think 
All of you need as much exposure as possible. If that's a podcast, small or large, great. If Amen. it's a stage, small or large, great, right? Uh, don't get too wrapped up in, in how big everything is. And I'll tell you, Matt, I'll tell you where I learned this. From um, from wonderful, you know, Chicken Soup for the Soul, actually, Mark Victor Hansen hired oh, me. Oh, Mark. Yes, Mark. He hired me to come and help him with a book they were putting out uh, with Robert Allen, The One Minute Millionaire. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, great book. And, you know, Mark looked at me and he said, you're sitting here around the table because I understand how important publicity is. He goes, why? Because when Chicken Soup for the Soul came out, and of course, you've all heard of that. When Chicken Soup for the Soul came out, we um, we did every single little PR thing we could in every city and everywhere around the world. It didn't matter how big or how small, because we knew the power of publicity. And that's actually what created chicken soup for the soul fame. So I want to say to you, don't always get caught up in, oh, it's bigger, it's not bigger. You know, I've been in, I've spoken to events, small groups, sometimes 15 people. And you know what? I had more conversions, more people taking my virtual publicity course, more people booking me for other speaking than maybe some of the bigger ones. So it's not Always, as they say, size does not always matter. So that's- <laughs> well, that is good to know. <laughs> um, and I, you know, I, I definitely couldn't agree more with the uh, the audience size. Like, don't get wrapped up in that. Now, at a certain point, like, okay, so for instance, for years, I mean, probably ten years as a speaker, I would, if there was a stage, I'm going. You know, if it was within a three hour drive ish. Um, any size, I'm going out. And I, I went plenty of times from Orange County to San Diego, and it's like there's seven people there. But, hey, especially in the beginning, if I have seven people and five of them opt in and one or two of them buy a two, five, you know, or more thousand dollar coaching program, you know, seven people turned into $10,000 in revenue. And when you, you know, if you did one of those a month, you're over six figures in the business. So, you know, never despise humble beginnings, never despise small beginnings. It's a big thing and it can still be useful moving forward. Um, so I, I, I like that. You're, cause for me, what I think, Jill, is the one major comparison I make. Tell me what you think about this. Um, I look at recorded versus recorded and live versus live. So if you have a live uh, summit that's live and people are attending that I can interact with, and I have a live, you know, in-person workshop. It's like that feels good because I'm getting this exposure in front of your tribe and you're getting exposure in front of my tribe. And then if someone's doing like an on-demand kind of a thing, you know, hey, we want to do this YouTube TV show. I want to do this blog talk radio. I want to do a podcast. I want to, I don't know, whatever it is. That kind of feels like the same thing where it's like, okay, it's on-demand or recorded versus recorded. Um, that's kind of how I look at it. And then I generally try to get, I don't know. I mean, kind of size for size, you know, in a way. Like, for instance, uh, if someone starts a podcast and they have 20 listeners, I'm very happy to go on and be interviewed and I want to help them and I want to be a part of the beginnings. No question. But I might not say, well, let me put you in front of 100 people live and speak for an hour and you can sell your programs. And then you let me be on your brand new podcast, right? Like, that's not quite fair. So every promoter, guys, is looking for what's the poker chip in a way. What can you give to them, bring to the table that really feels good and is valuable before you ask for the thing that um, that they have that's valuable? Any thought on that, or is that pretty much wrap it up? I think that's I think that's perfect. That's a, a great solution. I just say, you know, sometimes it's it, it's an intuitive thing. It's like, yes, I'm supposed to do this, and sometimes I don't even know why. So I might say yes to very small things. But here's what I've noticed, Matt, uh, which is interesting. Sometimes when someone's just starting out, they're yeah. kind of hungry and they will do a lot to promote. So that's I, I would encourage you to keep looking at some of the even the newer uh, podcasts coming out and to be a guest because they're going to promote. And that's a beautiful thing. That's true. Yeah, this is one of the one of the funny facts in the podcast world is pretty much everyone who's been around for long enough knows it. The bigger your guest, often the less work they'll do to help you with your episode. And that's just how it is, right? Like, you know, you get a, a top tier celebrity on the show. It was enough that they just went on so you can use their name in SEO. Like, that's all they're doing. They're not going to 
tweet out over and over again and say how wonderful the show was and they're not going to send it to their email list and all that stuff. They're probably not going to. But in turn, when you get someone who's kind of a relatively unknown name, so again, maybe you're starting off, that's something you can offer to people too. You know, I love it when they say, listen, I have this many Facebook followers and this many Instagram followers and I'm going to, I want to promote, I'm going to post and share the episode. And they have, and sometimes they have, they might have 50 people in the tribe, but they're 50 people that listen to what they say and really like it. And they're going to go listen to my show now because their friend was on it. So you know, if you want to get booked on top shows, you know, tell them what you want to do in terms of sharing it and being involved with it. And that might be enough to get over the edge too. Um, l- let's talk about how a little, some other ways you get booked. So Jill, pretend for a second, let's play a game where you don't have any platform anymore. Okay. Like what would you do? What if you woke up one day and you have no email list and you have no workshops and seminars and virtual summits of your own, no platform. And you want to start growing your business by speaking and getting out on stages. What are some, what would you maybe start with? What are some ideas you would do to try to get booked on stages if you have, again, quote, nothing to offer as far as a trade goes? Mm, Great question. So a couple things. Number one, of course, I would do some publicity. I'd get an article written so that you can establish yourself fast and you can get published on medium.com even, which is great. And you'll have an immediate Um, published article. So that we love, right? There's also some other great places you can put it. Um, So I'd start there. I'd start immediately with some podcasts and uh, matchmaker.fm is a fabulous place to get immediate podcasts quickly. Uh, So I love that. I'd probably start with that. I'd also, um, I'd start speaking, you know, (laughs) one thing somebody once told me is what did you used to do at the beginning of your career that worked? And, uh, and I, th- I really thought about that. You know what I used to do? Speak at rotary clubs and service organizations like Kiwanis. Um, probably not the Lions, but funny enough, rotary and Kiwanis are filled with business owners. At least for me, that would be my market. So think about who's your market, who's gathering to um, have, in their case, fellowship. But guess what? Rotary has the biggest leaders in the community. So these are sort of interesting secrets I found out. I actually was doing it to get my speaking chops down, to be in front of, you know, more and more people. And, and it was a strategy that interestingly enough worked. Um, and, you know, not huge amounts of necessarily profit from it, but certainly practice and certainly the opportunity to be in front of decision makers and what and and how about how about connections networking referrals when you meet someone you know oh well they run a a a large local business and again maybe they're not going to buy your program product or service or your coaching but they might say oh you want to speak more yeah you know a friend of mine you know he does these corporate retreats and let me introduce you like that kind of stuff can come from those gigs too can it absolutely absolutely You know, for instance, I had a woman, she speaks about parenting issues. So I said, go to the mom's clubs, right? There are clubs, so to speak, that that are focused particularly maybe on your topic and start looking for where those are and where you can speak for free. Um, And believe me, there are plenty of opportunities for that. So I just want to open that as a strong possibility is, like you said, you know, go and speak for as many people as you can, even if it's small groups. Um, because it will put you in front of people. And here's the thing. One leads to another to another. That's right. And I think that's really important. Um, so then I would do things like, you know, as many interviews as possible so that you can drive people to a free gift, for example, and then build your list. Um, and that's a beautiful thing. And you love uh, doing that on interviews like podcasts, like virtual summits. And speaking of free gift, let's just, this is a perfect time to plug this anyway, because... What here's what's great, right, Joe? What we're teaching and what we're helping people get right now is the very thing you and I are actually doing. So it's it's kind of like a chef that eats his own cooking, right? As yeah. uh, um, as our friend Keith Cunningham says, you might, you probably know Keith from your time speaking on Tony Robbins stages. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So he always says, "Well, you got to eat your own cooking," you know, from that Texas accent, and I love it because so let's eat our own cooking. You have an amazing gift that I think is a no brainer that full of value, really easy to get. It's your your publicity action guide where you're actually giving real actionable tips and 
techniques and, and processes about how to get free publicity. And you can get that at publicitycrashcourse.com slash free gift. We'll have that in the show notes, of course. Publicitycrashcourse.com slash free gift. Tell us briefly just about some of the nuggets that are in that because I downloaded it last time and have been working through it when we did our Driven uh, Entrepreneur interview. And it was amazing. Like it's some free, let me just say it like this. Some free gifts are a little bit jank. You know, they're a little bit light in the meat, you know, (laughs) Um, a lot of bread, not a lot of meat. Yours is just a ton of meat and it's just great stuff to follow. So tell me some of the cool gems in there. Oh, thank you, Matt. I don't know what jank is, but I'm going to go look that up afterwards. (laughs) I think it's a Michigan word for not so good. (laughs) Got it. Got it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you. And I would love um, for you all to to check it out. What it is, is is a publicity action guide filled with nuggets of uh, what to do when and really, you know, solid publicity tips in a good order for you to actually... um, take action with right now. And so I think you'll really love it. It's it's get it done as I tend to be more tactical and practical. And then also in that free gift is uh, the opportunity to come with me and be in a live publicity masterclass. And so uh, take advantage of both those things. I think you'll really enjoy it. Very cool. So let, let's talk a little bit about then, I just want to backtrack one question. Kiwanis and Rotary and local clubs like that. Now, for someone who's been seasoned speaking, it, it's a one-step process. You're like, oh yeah, why don't I, I should go ahead and get booked there. But speaking to a brand new speaker, someone who's still going, gosh, is will people actually book me? Because I just got my speaker one sheet, you know, your media sheet, or I don't have that, but I, I have a title of a talk. I'm just working on this stuff. What are like practically, what does it look like to say, quote, get booked at a at a rotary? Is it going to the site for the local club? Is it, you know, do you want to go on social to go find the president? Do you submit a form? It seems like an easy thing, but I just want to kind of quell any fear that anyone has. How easy is it? And what's a, a good practice to be able to reach out with a good chance to get booked? Well, here's the really good news. It's easy. <laughs> so you know, what I would do is Google your local rotary, um, and it does list who are the presidents. Um, it does require, you know, you've got to reach out to the usually the president and say, hey, I'm a, a local speaker. I talk about this and would love to come again. Bottom line, would love to come speak for your rotary. Um do you coordinate it that or is there someone else I should reach? Because sometimes it is the president, but most often it's not. Uh, and then what I do with that person is even my friends, listen up here, even if you don't have that speaker sheet done, even if you're not perfectly, quote unquote, ready, you probably know your topic. Yes. And I would do it one paragraph on your topic. Here's what I speak about. Keep this really simple. Don't overcomplicate it and send the darn thing out. Why do I say this? Because done is better than perfect. What I, what I, and you know, you're with Matt, you're being trained in the perfect part and, and getting it done the right way. But let me just say to you, um, I want you to start pitching even when you're not perfectly complete and ready. Why? Because first of all, um, they are booking ahead anyway. You know, you're not going to be booked tomorrow. You might be booked for three months from now. Um, and, and with rare exceptions, that's really what's true. So why I want you to uh, start now is that it, that your actual speaking opportunity does not become delayed. And I think that's an important piece. You know, like media, you start early because here's the deal. Um, we are planting seeds. We are planting seeds for right now. And they're going to bloom and they're going to happen. And they're going to, you know, uh, the pretty flowers are going to start, right? And it's like when you go and you buy those flowers all complete at at Home Depot or whatever nursery you shop at. And then then there are times where you're planting the seeds for the three, six, and nine months ahead. Same thing with your speaking career. You're planting seeds that are sometimes ahead. You mentioned Tony Robbins. Yes, I've been blessed to speak on his stage, Ultimate Business Mastery. And you know what? We plan that. Uh, I think we knew about nine months to a year ahead So some things you definitely know. I've got things on my calendar for speaking in 2022 uh, to the end quarter. You're planning ahead, yes, and you're planning for what works right now. 
Yeah, I just uh, I did a TEDx talk like two months ago, and that got booked 15 months before the event, maybe 16 months, because it was the deal where they said, well, one's coming up in a few months, but do you want to do the one next year because we've already filled up the speakers? And I was like, yeah, no problem. And so, so to your point, it's like if you start getting out there now because you might find someone who goes, oh my gosh, actually I had a speaker drop out or I haven't planned it yet because they're a little more last minute and do you want to speak next month? Um, or I have a summit coming up and I'm trying to find people and I need nine more speakers and boom, they want you in. Or it might be the deal where they go, hey, like, um, say like an e-women network or different um, groups like that, Jill, you know, that have one speaker every month. Well, very often those presidents and chapter leaders learn that they want to try and like National Speaker Association, same thing, right? They'll, they'll book a speaker every month, but then when they come and take over, they'll try to do a rolling 12 months and go, okay, from June to, or July to June next year, we're going to try to book all 12 meetings. And then if you catch them after they've planned the year, yeah, look, it, they got to finish the year and then they're going to try to book the next year. So don't be scared of it is the point. I've had plenty of times in September, I reach out and I say, hey, I don't know if you've done your speaker schedule yet for the whole year, but I'd love to throw my hat in the ring. And they go, oh, shoot, we already did. But it only goes through you know June. Um, would you be open for July 2022? And my answer is, absolutely, that's great. I'm free that day. <laughs> yes, exactly. And here's another thing that you said that I want people to, to really catch. The other uh, thing that you can do when you're talking to them is, listen, I want to tell you, if anybody cancels, put me in as your speaker who will replace them. I'm happy to do that if, if I'm available. That's right? so good. Yes, always say that because, listen, stuff happens all the time, my friends. So things move around. And, yep. and, you know, make yourself available. Put me in as a backup coach. Yep. Yeah. And the easy thing to remember is just say yes. You know, I don't, do you remember that movie, uh, uh, Yes Man with Jim Carrey? Did you see Loved that? Loved it. Loved it. Yeah. And like the, his whole like um, revelation in life is, oh my gosh, I just need to say yes to opportunities and little by little amazing things happen. I'm going to say yes to guitar. I'm going to say yes to the girl on the moped. And I'm going to say yes to July 2022 at the Rotary Club. Because you just don't know what's going to happen. Very, very good stuff. Um, let, let's, can we just kind of briefly, before we, as we wind down here, let's hit publicity a bit. Um, something you mentioned in the very beginning, and I know you're, of course, really good at this stuff. I'm a big fan of building up the resume or speaker bio. I think the more prestigious, credible, uh, exposure and accolades that you have it doesn't mean that you're prideful or whatever but can you can you first kind of answer the question what do you say to someone who maybe is like they're used to not talking themselves up right they, they don't when they promote themselves or say how you know they were on tony robbins stage or they were in forbes magazine or whatever to them it feels like bragging or pride and they're you know like I get I should do that, but I don't feel like I need to, or I don't feel like I should, or I feel like it's boasting and that's not who I am. Kind of what's your, what do you tell that person? Do they need it? Do they not need it? Um, help me out with that. Yeah. So first of all, your bio should state the biggest, most powerful things about you, right? So I have a speaker, she's a, a nurse and she kept forgetting to tell people she was a nurse. <laughs> so there's credibility in there, right? I mean, sometimes it's so interesting to me, we forget to, to, to lead with the most magnificent things, uh, you know, about us, right? And so my answer is, um, if people don't know what you've done, how will they see your greatness? And it is absolutely important that you lead with the best, the brightest, the biggest, if you don't have that, no worries. You know, you keep building until you get that next step. You still lead with the best of you. Um, and I will tell you, when it comes to publicity and promotion, it is your responsibility to let people know your greatness. And so I want to reframe that um, prideful boast thing into, listen, I never train people to do publicity from an ego perspective. I consider all of you that you have great gifts to give. And your gift is what you do in the world. That's why you want to speak. That's why you want to train. That's why you want to help people is the power of that gift of who you are. And so imagine the contribution you are giving, you are being 
by letting people know your greatness and so that your greatness can then multiply to others. Yeah, it's really good. Really good. I think uh, you might have had your iguana come out of the cage just now, scratching around on the desk, but that's okay. That's in case we were, <laughs> we were distracted. I was like, is she, is that, are those paper clips on the desk? Is that an yeah, iguana? No, actually, I'm sorry. My assistant was opening a piece of mail. No, I, we, <laughs> we were all wondering, the world was wondering, Jill, and now we're okay. We can rest <laughs> easy. It was a piece <laughs> of mail. <laughs> sorry, I love it. I love what comes through on mics. Um, so very, very good. So you're not bragging, but you do need to set up your pedigree, really. You know, um, I, I talk about from the psychological perspective, you're doing what's called bypassing the critical faculty, which basically means you're, you're going around the judgmental part of the people's brain when they recognize that you have been there, done that, or you have some credible experience, right? Or you've been somewhere, whether it's television or on podcasts or on the radio or big stages or written number one books, whatever it is. It tells their brain, oh, this is someone you should listen to. Otherwise, whatever you start teaching, talking, connecting with, they're going to be judging every word, wondering whether or not it's valuable. This way, they already know it's valuable. And it, it's is it fair? No, but it's the way people's brains work, and it's a really useful thing to get yourself used to doing. So lead with the prestige for sure. Well, final couple, then, yeah. Final couple. Go ahead. Yeah, if I may, because guess what? Please. You know, I'll just I'll just use myself as an example. I wasn't using the fact that I spoke on Tony Robbins' stage. I mean, hello, absolutely leave with that. I'm laughing at myself because some part of me went, oh gosh, should I really leave with that? And guess what? I was called on it from one of my coaches who said, Jill, hello, this is one of the most amazing things you've done, lead with it. And and of course, you know, that was a lesson for me too. I, I think for all of us, it's um, stepping into, I'll call it the best biggest thing that we've done. So take a look at what's the best biggest thing that you've done lead with that what's the best biggest thing you've done lead with that last question or two uh, i just want to kind of leave people with is because one of your biggest expertise as we talked about already uh, is publicity and again the publicity action guide is worth getting i promise it's open right now in a tab on my laptop as we speak and you can get it at publicitycrashcourse.com slash free gift let jill help you with some of this um where is a good place to start you talked about articles um, what are some other, I don't know, I guess publicity, because I, I see publicity in two ways. One is, and maybe I'm wrong on this, but so correct me or help me or add on. One way I look at publicity is that one that may or may not come back directly. But as you said, with chicken soup for the soul, it's like, we just want it all. So some publicity, I like when I go on TV, I don't g generally get clients as a result of somebody at home watching my segment and then calling me, Right. But I use that to build up the prestige credibility. It goes on my bio and it helps me when I meet the other ideal prospects clients. The other kind of publicity is the kind that's, you know, I got a live event. I'm going to get these tickets out there somewhere and someone might click on a link or come over to my website and I might generate traffic or generate leads that way. Is there a, I don't know, a good place to start? Is there bad publicity? Is there a preferred method or type to go after first? What would you give again to let's hit the newbie speaker, pretend they go, man, I know I need this in my bio, but I don't have anything. I took your crash course. I know that I should get an article at medium.com or whichever place. But what are some other ways that I can jump in and start getting my first bits of publicity? So a couple different things. I want you to go to Harrow, help a reporter out.com and register for it because what's going to happen is you will be flooded yes flooded with wonderful leads and PR possibilities so I have a financial advisor he speaks on financial management and how to build wealth he got one blog post from Harrow which increased his web visits by 45 percent and got him nine clients immediately like this stuff really works right so tell, tell us what help a reporter out looks like so you go to Harrow H-A-R-O and basically, it's it's reporters and writers and bloggers and article people and for well known publicity, uh, well known, um, what you call it? What are they, <laughs> what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, platforms and then also less known platforms, but it's all of it. And they're looking for sources and they're looking to compile a top ten list of something and they want ten different 
uh, contributors for their article they're writing, things like that, right? Exactly. And it looks like all kinds of different things. But here's the part, this is really important, pay attention, because I want you to use everything you've got. And this may be the very thing that gets you stretched into the media in a way that maybe you didn't think about before. So for instance, a speaker of mine who's African American, and she's a communications uh, coach and speaks about that. When Black Lives Matter burst onto the scene, I said to her, forget about everything we've talked about before with regard to PR. I want you to talk now because it's a restructure of the pitch. I want you to talk now about being a strong, competent Black woman in today's world and how do you communicate with confidence? And so that's a different kind of approach. I call this use everything you've got. So that is a great way that some of you will start getting into publicity and get it immediately when you didn't even think about this before. You know, great strategy. Look at all kinds of ways to get in. Matt, I think we were talking before about National Hot Dog Day, right? Yeah, my favorite. <laughs> so if you got kids and you know how to make a mean hot dog, could you, be, could you talk about National Hot Dog Day? You bet you could. And so, my friends, I want you to look at, at ways to get your media out there, your name out there, your visibility factor, even when it's not exactly talking about what you speak about, what you train about. Be willing to get creative, get out there and do things a little bit differently. It'll make a big difference for how people see you. And it will create that I've heard of you somewhere syndrome. I've heard of you somewhere syndrome. Thank you, Aunt Jill, because you know how the syndrome of your, the kids don't listen to the parents, but then the cool aunt comes over and says the same thing, and all of a sudden they go, oh, I never thought of that. And you're like, come on. I, you said it so beautifully. It's like, j even if you're not talking about the thing you talk about, you just need to get out there. I, I can tell people over and over again, I've done TV segments on ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, CW on superheroes. I did a backyard um, Father's Day gift barbecue thing. I've done what to do with your kids when you're home in the pandemic. I've done segments on all sorts of things that it really have nothing to do with what I do, but it gets my face out there. It gets me in front of people. It gives me a screenshot to share on my social media. And then what happens is my, my tribe and prospect pool that know me and follow me go, oh, there's Matt again. There he is again. And you need to be the person that people around you say, oh, there you go again. You're just crushing it in life. Wow, you got another thing going for you. And they want to be around you and they want to start listening to you. And it might be because you did a cooking segment. It might be because you blogged about your kids. Doesn't matter what the content is, as Jill said, as long as you get the I've heard of I've heard of you somewhere syndrome. Well said, Jill. Any last thoughts, quotes, questions, jokes, uh, or plugs before we sign off together? Well, first of all, definitely go check out my publicity crash course action guide. Delighted to help all of you. Um, excited, Matt, as always, to be here with you. And I want to remind all of you that your message matters. Let's get it out there. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate it. And hey, thanks for listening to Speaking of Getting Booked Season 2. This is exciting. Jill Lublin, again, you can find Jill. All her links and social will be uh, in the show notes. You can go to Facebook and LinkedIn, the best places for Jill, and publicitycrashcourse.com slash free gift. Hey, if you want to follow the podcast, make sure you head over to Matt Browning Podcast. That's the German spelling, B-R-A-U-N-I-N-G, mattbrowningpodcast.com. And you can get, of course, subscribe and get all the back episodes from season one for Speaking of Getting Booked. We had some amazing, amazing guests talking about how to get booked at fairs, at schools, at corporate events galore. And we got more coming in season two. Stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything. And you can also check out The Driven Entrepreneur. Subscribe to that. Um, we're almost 300 episodes deep, hundreds of thousands of downloads. And uh, Jill's been on that one as well. So make sure you check out her episode. Plus lots and lots of more good stuff. It's all free content all for you, and I will see you next week on stage. Bye-bye.